Howdy howdy, this is Blue Otter, and today we are going to be playing Lasara Summit Kingdom. Uh, we are going to go and start in the standard, uh, choose from various different, different mountains in shape and condition, and play a standalone adventure, each with different set of objectives. They also have challenge, short and difficult scenarios, testing your optimization management skills, as well as your knowledge of the game systems. And a free build, it's kind of a sandbox, uh, no money balance to look at, out for, no, need to f no needs to fulfill, no objectives to complete, just build the most beautiful towns you can imagine. I love all the artwork on this. Uh, the first one that opens up is Hope Spark Hill, where we are going to start uh, our very first outpost of the High Mountain. Of all the years in the long and storied history of the Kingdom of Lesara, this one surely has to be the worst. Following the harvest, a mysterious mist suddenly appeared all across the kingdom. Then, the pandemonium started. Crops started to fail. Disoriented animals barely produced any milk. People started to get sick. And you can't see anything. The fog in this valley is even worse than the city. For all we know, we could be lost already. Faith, my friend. Have faith. We're following the path that's been chosen for us. Path? I don't see any path. Just the same damn forest going on for days. It's not entirely the same. Look, there are more and more pines, and the thickets are thinning out. We are getting higher. We'll get to the upland shortly. Even if that's true, what will we find there? Mark my words, mountains are no place for humans. Yes, but they are a place of the spirits. We will settle at the foot of the mountain and make our way up to build a grand altar at the very summit. The spirits surely will recognize our efforts and help us to drive the mist away. And Lysara will be saved. Yeah, that's great and all, but did you see how low on supplies we are? Never mind building a temple, we'll die of hunger before even reaching the top. Come on, it won't be that bad. Look on the bright side. Mountains are above the mist, so we'll be able to cultivate crops and pasture our yaks again. Mm, maybe. Until the first avalanche sweeps us all away. Stop worrying about minor details. We're on the most sacred quest, and nothing will stop us. Onwards! Alright, so here is our first mountain. Finally, a place above the mist with enough space to establish a small colony. It'll serve us as an outpost when we move on to bigger mountains. I guess it makes sense. We need to maintain contact with the capital in case they need to come and save us. Nonsense. We'll achieve great things in these mountains and this small settlement will be our first step. Let's start by building a district for our workers. Okay, so we've got a couple things to do. We have camera controls. We have moving the camera around. And then try the overview camera, which is with the mouse. That's it. Okay, mouse wheel. Hold the overview camera. Uh, I need back over here. There we go. Default key bindings. Uh, Spacebar. And then we have game speed one, two, and three. Awesome. Place a food market. So we're going to place a food market right about here. Okay. Continue. Uh, say, see the marker above the food market? That is not showing up. I believe the devs have also said that they are, that some of those are a known issue and so they will be fixing that in an update. Uh, so we're going to build a road right here. Build a road between that and the outpost. 
we are going to go ahead and make a nice little square out of or around the food market have 32 lowlanders living within the range of a food market so we're going to take this we need this each house provides four so we need 32 which means we need eight houses so let's start with uh, right here we will do yeah, one two three four five six seven eight now that flashing is it's supposed to stay up they're not supposed to uh they're not supposed to be flashing like that but that's an issue that the devs are aware of and they are going to be fixing that uh, hopefully pretty soon uh the very first settlers on the mountain that's great we should take care of their basic needs like shrines they need to have a spot where they can pray for the success of our mission hmm I meant providing them with food. Well, we can do that too, I guess. But spirituality comes first. Uh, so we need to provide them with a praying place. We're going to go over here to the enlightenment tab. Come over to the praying place. And then this is going to highlight which houses have access to that praying place. Uh... Yeah, that's going to be where I'm going to need to put it. Okay. We're going to continue. Uh, great, you need to fulfill... Click on a lowlander's house. Alright. Uh, here you can see both the fulfilled needs and the still demanded one needs are divided into either food, prosperity, and enlightenment. So the bar shows how much they have and then what you still need to upgrade their home the menu we're going to start with building why that's all right we're going to build a chicken farm so we're going to build one uh, right here we're gonna do I'm gonna actually do two so they've got a little bit of room I'm gonna hope uh, then we also need to provide them so what we do is we just drag and drop over there there we go so that's gonna provide them with plenty so we're gonna increase the food variety by having some Sampa or a flour made from barley so over here, I like to have the mill first because I want the mill to really be close enough to the city, but I also want these to be like right here. So we're going to have one, two, and you just combine these like so, and then you have a mill. Like so. And there we go. Uh, with three needs fulfilled, citizens are happy enough to upgrade their housing. You could do this by clicking on the button above the house. Now, this flickering should be fixed, hopefully in a coming update. I have been able to get it to work once, but in the meantime, I'm just going to click on each building and upgrade it a more manual means which would probably be a little bit faster if I use the touch screen function of my screen rather than I actually have a trackball mouse is what I use because uh, I don't like having the mouse going all over the desktop okay splendid looks like the lowlanders are happy here they will be the backbone of our settlements economy yeah, but artisans won't be satisfied so easily. They are used to to a they are used to a certain standard, you know. He is a killjoy. 
Uh, but if we want to progress, we'll need them for our ma for their manufacturing skills. I'm sure we can somehow make them comfortable too. Uh, look, this seems a perfect place for an artisan district, if you ask me. We can try, I guess. Alright, so we need to connect the two regions with a bridge. And I like to, if I can, have this come out to, here's a step. And, yeah, we're going to have this come out down to there. Just because I think that that's a weird angle to have it at. Uh, we're going to continue. Alright. Artisans after Lowlanders are another social caste. They are helpful when running more advanced buildings. So we need 40 artisans living within the range of a food market. So let's look and see what we're going to, what we have. Uh, let's do... A food market. Let's have this come out. Because I'm weird and like straight lines if I can help it. So let's build this about right. Uh, let's build this about right here, actually. That look good. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna have okay. Now we need ours. So there, those are going to be these red houses. Uh, let's go one, two. Uh, so if I need forty, I'm gonna need ten of these. And let's do Okay, so this is kind of our We'll try and we're just gonna do have nice little city blocks. There we go. Uh, let's fulfill our, our artisan's needs, provide them with food and access to enlightenment facilities. So we can definitely do that by having one there and we'll do one up here. Upgrade the progress bar. Okay, so we need some egg production. So we can do that maybe about like right over here. We do need to have a road. The little flashing symbol that should be straight on is going to um, actually be uh, it'll it'll be a means of being able to go over there. Otherwise, you can come over here and you can click on this and then click on the. On the city center. Uh, then we're going to do the Sampa production and we can possibly have that be here. Yeah with a mill uh, right about there. There we go. And there is our... Alright. Mountains are rich in natural resources. We can extract them using mines. Uh, now I believe there's one of these. I believe it's down here. You can click on the prosperity. But for now we're just going to come over here to build mine. And then it has it up here. And this kind of frustrated me a little bit. Because I was like, where am I supposed to put it? You put it down here. So we're going to have it be about right about here. 
Okay. And then... For right now, we're just going to... There we go. There is our copper mine. And connected to the road system. So we need some yaks, uh, because yaks are the other... Once so we have a yak pasture to build the yaks town population. Uh, so one of my favorite aspects of this game are the yaks. Uh, I wish I could do this as vertical, but that's not quite how this works. So we're going to... Do I have enough to do that? Yeah, we're going to do two here and we might be able to do... No, we won't quite be able to do another one, but we'll be able to... We could have a couple more over there. Alright, but that gets us 10 yaks, so we need a commodity supplier. So, where you're going to go to eventually build, so if in the future, if we we're going to build a copper mine, we build it here. Uh, but that's already been unlocked, so we're going to do a proper smith. And we're just going to have, uh, we're going to start with one, and we're going to put it right here. And this coppersmith is then going to... Oh, and then we need a commodity supplier. That's what they want. Okay, so we're going to have a commodity supplier right here. And this is going to go to the commodity supplier. So this goes there. There we go. So the copper mine goes to the... Coppersmith, Coppersmith makes utensils and goes to the commodity supplier. Um, managing flow of resources seems that there aren't enough utensils for everyone. However, Coppersmith only uses one unit of copper. That means a single mine can supply multiple workshops. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build a distribution hut. Uh, right here. So instead, we're going to cancel that going there, and we're going to load that to this distribution center. And then from here, it'll go to that. Uh, that coppersmith. And then we're going to build a second coppersmith that we'll be able to distribute to. So see, it has two of them there. And then this coppersmith will also distribute to there. There we go. All right, there we go. Hey, I got an idea. Let's expand higher. The climate in the middle zone of the mountain is just perfect for bees and producing honey. So we need to have an operational shaft. We're going to have one right here. And try to have one as straight as possible on a road that I would never go to. Alright, there is that one. Alright, have two operational beekeepers. We come over here and beekeeper. Uh, let's have bees and bees. Your brilliant plan seems to have a flaw. Flaw? It's a perfect place for bees. You act like you got stung by one. Oh, open your eyes. How are we going to transport all this honey down? Have you heard of a thing called gravity? Relax. With the right attitude and open mind, we can overcome any obstacle. How exactly will an open mind help us transport anything? Oh, just you wait. Let's get my fellow monks here. They'll come up with a solution. All right, you can increase research levels in your town by gaining access to more buildings. 
This is done by scholarship. Uh, facilities such as the academy, however, it will grant research only when staffed, so you will also need monk dormitories. So we're going to come over here. We have an academy uh, that we can place right here. And then we're going to need some monk dormitories placed uh, let's start let's pause first so I'm not continually being drained by having all the monks that I'm having to do ad hoc okay then we're going to have one these aren't too far from the um, from the food but they are there they seem to be close enough all right so we can unpause we do have enough monks all right at a research level one you gain access to the cart post it works like a carrier post but isn't restricted by range therefore it's perfect for long distance transportation so we're going to have a cart post right here. We're going to feed the beekeepers there. And that's going to go right down to honey. So now all of these are able to be upgraded. I'm going to go ahead and finish upgrading these. There we go. Continue. Nicely done. We've done some decent groundwork here. We're now ready to continue with our quest and travel to the first real mountain high enough for a summit temple. Not so fast. We still need a logistics plant point down here and more importantly, a way to secure our financial situation. Oh, come on. Do we really need to deal with such trivial matters? We've got bigger things to pursue. Trivial? This whole endeavor is an insanely complex logistical operation, which could end in disaster in the blink of an eye. We have to make sure the treasury checks out, or that's the end of us. So we need to start getting donations from our citizens, uh, which we're going to place right about here. I don't know if that... If I click on that, that gets everyone but the monks. So we can come down here, and we can also place one, uh, place one down here. And I will place another one right there, just in case I want to uh, get some extra money from the lowlanders. All right. This will be a good spot for a trading post. It'll be easy to send resources further from here. Huh? What's that noise? Uh-oh. Alright, forget it. We're all going to die. Relax. No one got hurt. Actually, this avalanche wasn't that huge. I bet we can still have a trading post in the region. You want to stop all this snow with your sheer power of your mind? Go ahead. I'll stay here and watch. Don't be stupid. We just need a few foresters to provide tree cover. That should do the trick. Alright, so we're going to... Uh, we're going to start with building a nice trading post. Uh, we're going to have it be right about there. But we're going to come over here to avalanche protection. And we're going to build some foresters and the way you can tell that you're protected is in that white zone there we go and then to make sure that we have everyone we are going to need to have some more lowlanders so really quickly we are going to add 
just another quick row of buildings. These guys will all be ready to upgrade. So we will have plenty of workers. There we go. So there. Wait, here it comes. And hooray, it worked. The trading post is safe. I told you from the very beginning there's nothing to worry about. Now we're finally ready to move. Let's make our way to the first real mountain. Can't wait. Yeah, he's definitely a buzzkill. So with that, we do have several other mountains that we can go to. We have Wind Slab, contains rocky features, making dealing with avalanches a real challenge. And they come as powerful as ever from the very start. Get some warm clothes. Mount Plenty, huge mountain with a lot of space and resources. If you want to go big with your town, this is the place. Talent Top, a good sized mountain with everything you'll need for establishing a proper settlement. Smothered Flame, a very dry environment with lots and lots of natural resources and plenty of space. Splintered Soul, spacious mountain divided into two parts, one part of fertile soil, the second filled with resource deposits. Demon's Rest, very limited space with not much fertile ground for farming requires careful planning. Uh, we are going to start with Talon Top, um, but we're going to come back here and look really quickly at the early access roadmap. So they do have several things that they are planning on bringing, including like trade between player towns, new scenarios, new mountains new resource transportation methods, visual upgrades, and the campaign mode will be included in the 1.0 release. So very cool game, very unique system for a city building uh, that's different. It's not quite so much the managing and encouraging the push and pull factors uh, because you saw when you build a building, it's automatically populated. But this is very much a strategy of worker placement and getting things in a movement and resource management system. So with that, we will continue in the next episode with Talentop. So thank you for watching. Have a great day.